situation. This man is asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? What is the requirement? There must be requirement that I'm supposed to do so that I never go to hell. So if you are hearing me right, this is the point. This is a man who is asking a question to Paul and Silas because he does not want to go to hell because of his sins. Number one, in that question, he realizes that he's in danger of going to hell. You know when you begin to ask someone, what must I do to, to be saved? What must I do to go to heaven? It begins from you being informed that hey, you are in danger. The probability, the chances of you going to hell are high. Any sin that you have ever committed in your life is enough to take you to hell. It's not about a big sin. It's not about a small sin. No. Any sin that you've ever committed in your life and you are still in that condition, you have not come to a point of asking Paul and Silas, what must I do to be saved? You have not come to a point of agreeing to speak to our soul winners. Agreeing to speak to Pastor Paul, agreeing to look out for the truth. That scene is just enough. How are you, madam? Okay. You are speaking to Pastor Paul Oringa mm -hmm. of a church known as Faithful Word Christ Baptist Church. Mm. We are at Kwandege. Whom am I talking to? Uh, I'm talking to Nicole. Nicole. Yes. Okay. Nicole, we are here just to inquire and know if you are a Christian or not. Yes, I am. You are a Christian? Yes. You go to church? Yes. Which one? Um, Anglican ECC in Jericho. Anglican ECC ECCA. Je ECCA yes. Jericho. Yes. Okay. Have you been going there for a long time? Yeah, every day. Every day. Yes. Okay. Now, do you believe all Christians will go to heaven? <laughs> no. Okay. Why? Mm. Why do you think not all of them will go to heaven? Sins. Yes. Oh, because of sins. Yes. Ignorance. So ignorance. Oh, I like I like I like your answer. Sins, ignorance. Any other anything? Lack of role models. Lack of role models. So when you talk of role models, are you talking about pastors or what? <laughs> Even parents. Even parents. Yes. Okay. So if they miss out on those things, they will go to he to hell. I guess. You guess. Okay. Do you believe Catholics are Christians? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I studied in a Catholic school. Oh, you studied in a Catholic school. So you believe in their doctrines? 
I just think it's according to someone's faith. Oh, you think that it's because okay, according to someone's faith. Yes. So then now that you said according to someone's faith, now I want to come down to your faith. Okay? You said you're who? Nicole. Nicole. Nicole, I wanna know if you are a hundred percent for sure that if you are to die today you will go to heaven. <laughs> Are you a hundred percent for sure that if you are to die today, you'll go to heaven, Nicole? I'm not sure. You are not sure. Yes. Could it be the reasons you gave me before? Lack of role model, sin, ignorance. Is it one of them? You, do you have a role model? Yes. Did you stop sinning? <laughs> Please, just feel free to talk to me because uh, I want to understand something. Did you stop sinning? I don't know. You don't know. Okay, fine. What was another reason you gave? Ignorance. Ignorance. Okay. Are you ignorant? I think sometimes. You think sometimes. Okay. Fine, Nicole. I'm so glad that you gave me what you think and what you believe in. But today I'm here for a very good reason. And maybe you will appreciate this reason after I have gone. I am here to prove unto you that going to heaven is very easy. Going to heaven is very easy. I know that maybe you had preachers preaching saying it's hard to go to heaven, you need to struggle to go to heaven. Because one thing I believe is that Nicole, if you have to be to stop your sins to go to heaven, is it is it an easy thing? Yes. Is it easy to stop your sins? <laughs> let me show you this one. Show me, let me show you this scene here Nicole and tell me if you stopped it. Proverbs 24 9 the Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin do you think this stopped happening with you having foolish thoughts stupid thoughts in your head did it stop no. it didn't isn't it yes. okay so if God was to say Nicole you have to be zero percent sinful to go to heaven do you think it's easy if God was to say of course you know no sin will enter heaven isn't it yes. but then God gives the burden of making sure that you are never committing any sin whatsoever. Do you think it's easy? No. It's not easy, isn't it? Yes. It's a hard thing. Okay. Now, let me, be, let me just go straight to the point. Going to heaven is very easy. And none of the reasons that you gave me is a requirement to go to heaven. Sadly. All the reasons that you gave me, Nicole, none of them is a requirement. Let me show you that. Act 16, Act 16, <clears throat> Act 16, 31. Is, this is the story of Paul and Silas while in jail. I know you heard of that story. Okay? Yes. But then the Bible says, the soldier that was guarding Paul and Silas asked them a very important question that I want you to consider. The Bible says, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? To be saved is to go to heaven, isn't it? Yes. To be saved is to be rescued from the danger of going to hell. So this man is so desperate, is asking Paul and Silas, is there anything that I must do to go to heaven? I think this question would have been given other answers, like he was ignorant, having a role model, and what have you. But the interesting thing is that Paul and Silas are providing a very different answer. Verse 31, and they said, can you read for me, Nicole? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So what, did, what was this man told? Was he told to look for all models? No. Was he told, you know, you have to go to church? No. Was he told, you know, you have to stop your sins? No. no, this guy was told a very simple answer. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Is Paul wrong? Do you think Paul is wrong? He's not wrong. Who is wrong here? <laughs> you, isn't it? All right. Let's not just focus on that and say, oh, now we are done. Because we have to compare scripture to scripture so that you are convinced, isn't it? John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You believe, you'll never perish. To perish is to go to hell. Instead of going to hell, you'll have what? Eternal, Eternal life. Have you ever read John 3.16 before? Yes. Did you ever see something inside this John 3.16 of believing? 
Look, the Bible didn't say, for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever takes him as a role model, or whosoever is not ignorant, no, the Bible says just believing. Look here, Nicole, the Bible says, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says God will never condemn you. That means God will never take you to hell. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. God is saying this, Nicole. You choose to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, no condemnation. But if you say, I don't want to believe on Jesus Christ, I want to continue following my role models, I want to continue, make sure I'm not ignorant, and all what that you gave me, the Bible says God condemns you immediately. Because the only thing that God wants you to do, Nicole, to go to heaven, is to believe on his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. What makes the difference is the belief on the Son. You believe on the Son, God says you have everlasting life. That means you live forever. You don't have the Son, the Bible says you shall not live. But the anger of God is upon you forever. So what is important? Believing. Isn't it? Yes. Up to this point, what is important is just believing. Let me show you a proof of showing you that, Nicole, Jesus is not lying. And Jesus will never lie. And God will never lie. The point is, if you believe today, you will never smell hell. Jesus is giving us the assurance of saying, John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Keep note that Jesus himself is saying they shall never perish. That means they shall never go to hell. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. This is an assurance given unto you. That once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, regarded to be his sheep, then there are no chances for you to go to hell. You shall never perish. No one can remove you from his hands. No one can remove you from the hands of his father. And because him and the father are one. You understand, Nicole? Look here, many people, there's a reason why I asked you if you believe Catholics will go to heaven, if you believe whoever it is that calls himself a self will go to heaven, I had a reason. And the reason was this, many people believe that because I'm called a Christian or because I was born in a family by my dad and mom go to church, I'll go to heaven. Look, many so-called Christians that are going to hell today. And you know, the bad news is that, is until you die, you realize that, hey, I am in hell. But yet in, in the world, you are a good church member, you go every day, and then when you die, they sing good songs over your body, but where is the soul? In hell. Let me show you that. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 21, Jesus himself speaking, the Bible says, 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is just showing plainly, not everyone is going to heaven, isn't it? Yes. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So we have a people who are busy in the name of the Lord doing things, but God is looking for people who do the will of his Father to go to heaven. So you'll either choose to continue to do things in the name of the Lord, or rather choose to do the will of the Father. And to be wise, you would rather look and find out what is the will of the Father. Because the word will means what the Father wants you to do. The only thing. He says in verses 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. It will be a sad day for you, Nicole, after you've gone to church for many years, you've been active in the ministry, either singing, either ushering, whatever you do there, and then at last you realize that Jesus does not know you. Where is the problem? The problem is that you did all these things in the name of the Lord, but you never considered to do the will of the Father. 
Here we have preachers who are telling Jesus, didn't we preach in your name? They are telling Jesus, didn't we cast devils using your name? They are telling Jesus, people, didn't we do many wonderful works, good works? And Jesus is like, I don't know you guys. The problem is here, Nicole. They never did the will of the Father. So the question would be, what is the will of the Father? Up to this point in time, you should be knowing the will of the Father, Nicole. Do you know the will of the Father? Yes. What is the will of the Father? You should believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the Bible says, John 6, 40. Let's just confirm that with the Bible so that we agree. The Bible says, John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Nicole, I'm not talking to you as a perfect person. I'm a sinner. I told you I'm a pastor, but again, I'm not ashamed to tell you I'm a sinner. Do you believe you're a sinner, Nicole? Yes. Look, the Bible says we have all sinned. According to Romans chapter 3, no one is righteous, the Bible says. Let me show you there. The Bible says, <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The word righteous means perfect. Okay? So according to the Bible, which is true, no one is perfect. No human being is perfect. Even if you are to try to be perfect on yourself, to go to heaven, in the eyes of God, you are still not perfect. You are still a sinner. Because the Bible says, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So in the eyes of God, even if you try to be good today, the record still stands, you are a sinner. Where do we, are we supposed to go when we die because of our sin, Nicole? Hmm? Where are we supposed to go when we die because of our sin? Hmm. Hell. The Bible says, chapter 6, verse 23, For the wages of sin is yeah. death. Now, when the Bible speaks about death here, it's not talking about the physical body, because even me that is talking unto you, being saved, I'll die one day. The Bible is saying, when you die in your physical body, your soul goes to hell. And that is called the second death. Revelation 21 Hey, the Bible says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Imagine that the Bible speaks of all liars. Have you ever lied before? Yes. <laughs> so where are we supposed to go? Me and you? Go to hell. So just imagine that even the smallest thing like lying, because in our society today, lying is just a small thing to take you to hell. But then, Nicole, do you think God is loving or hateful? Loving. So if God is loving, where do you think God wants you to go? Heaven, isn't it? So by him wanting you to go to heaven, do you think he's going to make things hard or easy? If he wants you to go to heaven, is he going to make the way to heaven easy or hard? Easy. Easy. And that easy way is just believing, isn't it? And that's why he says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God wants to give you a way to heaven as a gift. A gift is a free thing. You don't have to pay for anything. You as is to receive or to reject. And God says, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That gift which is eternal, which is, will never perish, which is not temporary, is in Jesus Christ. What did Jesus Christ do for you? He died for you, right? So did he die for all your sins or some sins? All your sins. Did he die for the past sins alone or all the sins even in the future? All the sins, isn't it? And that's why the Bible says, chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So salvation is a free gift. The reasons you gave me before, they have nothing to do with that gift. It's like you are trying to earn your way to heaven because if you have to stop sin to go to heaven, it's like you are paying the cost so that you never go to hell. 
but Jesus paid the cost for you here. He never committed any sin, but he died as a sinner. He was killed on the cross because of your sin and my sin. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.8, to prove to you that salvation is just a free gift, it's not of works. The Bible says, uh, uh, Ephesians 2.8, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved, through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If salvation was of works, we will have people saying that, hey, I have tried to obey my parents, now I'm going to heaven. But God says salvation is not of works. Nobody is in heaven today claiming to be a good person to go there. Nobody is in heaven today saying that I stopped this to know. Everybody who is in heaven today, including Abraham, Paul, Matthew, whatever have you, they only, want, they only know one testimony. I was just given by the grace. I deserve to go to hell, but God who is loving gave me as a gift. Now, so far you know that it's a gift. So far you know that going to heaven is easy. So far you know that you don't have to struggle to go to heaven. Maybe something is going on in your mind as in like, Pastor, are you just trying to say that now I should continue sinning? I hope that is running in your mind. <laughs> it's not running in your mind. Fine. But I want to tell you, even after you believe today, it is not to say that you'll never commit sin. Do you agree? Yes. Because we are still living in this body, isn't it? So what happens unto me as a believer if I commit sin after I've believed? What will happen unto me? I'll go to heaven. You'll go to heaven. <laughs> I like it. You'll go to heaven, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But what will happen unto you in this body is that God will chastise you. God will punish you as his child. Because the Bible says in John chapter 1, let me just show you, to make sure that you understand everything and even after I'm gone, you will not have any doubts. John chapter 1 verses 12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. How do you become a child of God? By receiving Jesus. How do you receive Jesus? By believing. Keep note, it's not by you giving his life to him, your life to him. There's a false gospel outside that says you have to give your life to Jesus. No, the Bible says it is Jesus who gave his life for you and me, isn't it? So once you do that, the Bible says you become a child of God. Now, after you become a child of God, you will never stop to be a child of God because of everlasting life, isn't it? I know that now you are a grown-up lady, but when you were young, what did your parents do to you anytime you, you wronged them? <laughs> they will beat you, isn't it? Was that a sign of saying they hate you? No. It was love, isn't it? The Bible teaches the fact that even we, after we are born in the family of God, if we go sinning willfully, God will chastise us. God will beat us because the Bible says in Hebrews 12, and this is so important for you to understand that even if you go sinning, you'll never go to hell, but God will chastise you. And you don't want God to be beating you every day. Right? The Bible says, Hebrews 12, 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourge every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons? True sons are punished when they sin. Bastards, God has no business with them because they are going to hell. And I believe that you don't want to be a bastard. I believe that you want to be a son of God today, or a child of God today, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So before I come to that, I want to ask you, Nicole, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that he died on the cross because of your sins? Yes. Do you believe that he came back to life yes. and now is seated on the right hand side of God, the Father? Yes. Okay. Are you willing to ask him this morning to save you? Yes. Okay, let me show you how to do that. Romans. Romans 10 shows us how we can call on his name so that he can save us. The Bible says, Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, going to hell is a dangerous thing. And once you notice that you are on that road, you, you better call the one who has the power to take you away from that road, and his name is Jesus. So you have to call on his name. How do you do that? The Bible says, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you have to confess with your mouth that he is the Lord, 
and also have faith in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and the Bible says for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed so what is saving you is your faith Calling on his name is a proof of what is in your heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If faith is in your heart, you'll have no problem confessing that faith with your mouth. But if faith is not in your heart, you'll have problems confessing that faith with your mouth. And so I believe that having taken time to show you the gospel, are you now deciding to subscribe to the new faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and forsake those other beliefs? Yes. Are you now coming to a point of seeing that being ignorant, having role, mo uh, having role models and what have you will not take you to heaven, yes. but only believing on Jesus? Please repeat this prayer after me as a way of calling on his name. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, am a I am a sinner. Please forgive me Please forgive of all my sins and give me eternal life. eternal life. I believe that, I believe that you, died you died and rose again, rose again because, of my sins. because of my sins. Thank you Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for saving me. saving me. In Jesus name, In Jesus name I am saved. Amen. 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 Nicole, one, one, one thing I want you to see is that before today you are on your way to hell. You are going to church every day, you are busy in church matters, and I, maybe I perceive that you love church and all that, but look, bad news if you are to die yesterday, to wake up in hell. Thank God for this blessing, it's God who directed us on your door, and so we want to leave you this booklet. This booklet contains the book of John and Romans. John and Romans, why? Because if you read through, you'll see that it speaks more about salvation by faith alone, which is eternal. But also behind this book is the details concerning our church. The name of our church is called Faithful Word Christ Baptist Church. The name of the pastor who is me is Pastor Paul Ringa, and this is my number. I put here this number for the purpose of you might come to a point of saying, I want to visit this church one day and hear what they preach or be part of them. My number will help to show you direction. You can also go on our YouTube channel type Faithful Word Christ Baptist Church. Sometimes when you, try, when you are typing, it will bring you Faithful Word Christ Church, something like Kakamega. No, it's the channel or Pastor Paul or Ringa, whatever. You'll find whatever we do there. But this is my message unto you, that one day we, if God gives you the grace, visit us, be our visitor, and we'll be glad. I hope that we'll meet before we meet in heaven. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you for your time. Thank you so much. Asante.